Hi, and welcome to Extronical. If you've ever had the compiler error message for your ESP32 out of memory, when it's got four megs on board and you've like not used more than a meg or so, and you can't figure out where your memory's gone, then this video's for you. We're gonna look at how we solve that. Roll the titles. Is that it? <sighs> So here's the error message you can get down here in the orange writing. Sketch too big. See, blah, 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 and tips to reduce it. And yet you know for a fact that's not the issue. You're on an ESP32. It's got four megs, supposedly, somewhere. But you've got maybe a large data file, which this particular program does, which means we're just tipping over basically 1.3 megabytes of data there. So it's ran out. Now, why do we get this problem? This maximum one megabyte that we can upload. That four megabytes by default is split up roughly into six partitions. But three of them take up such a tiny amount of small space, I'm gonna disregard them. So what's left is roughly divided into three. You've got your program memory, where your actual program goes. You've got your OTA area, which is identical in size to the program memory. And you've got the SPIFS filing system area. And technically speaking, when I say this is the OTA partition, it's actually known as app one. And your program partition, when your program goes, is called app zero. When you send your program to ESP32 over there, it is first stored in the app one partition, which will be identical in size to your program partition. So if that's got one, one meg allocated, that will also have one meg. Just in case that while it's uploading to your ESP32, it doesn't quite get it all there, it's not valid, it's corrupted. So that your program is still valid in your, in your ESP32, even if the update fails. And only if you've, everything went well, would it then actually overwrite your program. But if we're not using over the air programming, we can reduce that, which I never do. So you could decide you want spiffs, and as much program memory as you can. So we'd basically get rid of the OTA and have a lot of spiffs and a lot of program memory. Or if you still want over the air, you're gonna to have to sacrifice that spiffs and reduce the amount that. So it's up to you which one you choose for how your application is going to work. So you've looked on the internet for some solutions. Let's show you one of the solutions you've probably come across and it hasn't worked, which is why you're probably looking at my video. So you go up to tools and the website or the video, or whatever, it'll say, come down to your tools and down here you'll see a thing that says partition scheme. And the moment it's set to default, you've got some options to change how much memory you can write your program to. And by default, you've got that one meg you've got that you've seen that you keep running out of. And you can see, oh, I could set it for two. And you see that on a website and you see that on a video, it's like, cool. But then you come to your tools menu and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a quick jump cut and show you what you will see rather than what they say you'll see. So you'll be following that website. You come up to your tools, expected to find that partition menu. You come down and it ain't there. Oh, uh, what the? And you go looking on the internet and you find this solution over and over again on videos, on whatever. And you may even find people that have said, I can't find it. And, and solutions on the web saying, well, you edit this boards.txt file or you edit these partition tables in this folder. And it all gets a bit confusing. So, what you want is an easy menu option here. What I'm gonna show you in this video is how to get it on there so you can actually do that. So what you're gonna do, you need to get this boards.txt file open that you may have seen. There is one for the Arduino IDE, don't pick on that one, it's the wrong one. You want the one for the ASP setup that you've got. To find it, that's not necessarily an easy task, but open up your file window go onto your main drive, which I mine is a C drive. You're gonna double click on users, and then your main user that you use, for me it's one called Naval. And then the next folder you're looking for is a folder called app data, application data, app data. And you'll see this on websites, and you'll see here that it isn't there, is it? And that's just simply because it's a hidden folder. The system doesn't want you going into these folders necessarily. 
but they are there. Now you can actually alter some uh, view settings in here and that can make you see all hidden files and folders. But if you don't wanna bother doing that, just click into there, so you get that, type a backslash, and then type in update because the folder is there. And we've opened that folder. So now then we're going to local. So this is all looking for the board's TXT file. We have to edit this to tell it about partitions on the SP32 for the board that I'm using. So I'm using the do it board, dev kit one. You will need to look for your own board if you're not using that, but I'll show you that process. So Arduino 15 is where we go next. And then we go to packages, ESP32. You can see it's really nicely well hidden. Hardware, ESP32 again. You'll have possibly a different version number than this depending on when you installed your system or in fact, if you've installed your system some time after this video was made. But this is just the version number. So I'll just double click that, you'll have probably a different number yourself. And we're here, we found the board's file that we're looking for, the text file. Open up that, brings it up into Notepad, and you've got lots of definitions for all the boards. You can see there's a Rover board there, uh, a LoRa board, all sorts of ESP32 thing, all the board definitions for the common boards that you're gonna encounter. And for mine, mine's the Do It board. You would want to search for your particular board. So I'm gonna type in Do It. And then we go to it just at the bottom. Let's just scroll that up and get rid of the search. Do it dev kit one. You can see there's a whole range of definitions that this board's capable of. What we need to do is add some partitional information in there, which isn't there by default. Now, obviously, because these people in videos have been saying that it's there, then I'm guessing at some point they were, but for me, they weren't on my installation. So if you look down here, you can see I've actually typed in Extronical Editions at the end of the SB32 Do It Dev Kit 1 settings for that board. And you can see I've actually currently come to the mount. That was so I could actually demo what you would see if these definitions are not there. But to get that partition menu up, you need to have this text. I will paste this in the description video down below. And these definitions will probably work for most boards, not just the do it board. So you would just de add these lines. I'm just gonna comment them out. And did I make a, a little error there? Yes. And when I reset that board, restart my Arduino IDE, you'll get that partitions menu with these various options on. But if you want to put this into a different board, you can see, I'll show you what you need to do. So let's just go to a different board. The next one down is ESP32 EVB. So we'll go to the end of those definitions, which is just there. And I presume this is a four megabyte board as well. Not familiar with it, but most are. And then you just change where it's, take that name out there, ESP32 EVB, and you would just change that. And change that for all of those there, for whatever board you have, and that should do it. I'm just gonna undo that. <laughs> I'm just going to delete that now because I don't want that. Save that board's definition file. Close my Arduino. I'll just close that notepad. Close my Arduino software. So I'll launch my Arduino software again. And if we go to tools now, there you go. You can see the partition scheme. And by default, that won't compile. It's not enough. So I'll choose to use no over the air programming so I can have a large app. Select that one and compile. And there we are, it's done. You can see now we've only used 62% of our nearly two megabyte available space. I hope that's been useful for you. If you've seen the other solutions that have not worked for you for the reason I've shown. If you did, put a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content, then hit that subscribe button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me and thank you very much for watching. Till next time. Catch you later.